Mick Dizzle Gaming coming at ya. I hope things are going well and I hope you're having a great day. Called Arms Mode has released and we've had a few days with it and the general consensus is that it's pretty awesome. Today's video is to go over six practical tips to help you with the new Call to Arms missions. Everyone's gonna have a different skill level at this and not everyone's gonna be like, I did Call to Arms solo with three throwing knives and a tomahawk. Hopefully these will be helpful to you and leave any tips that you might have in the comments below. Tip number one, let's talk about weapons and ammo. Everyone's gonna have their own personal preference, so I'll let you know what I went with and why I did. So I've always been bringing my semi-automatic shotgun with me, that is a given. I've switched between the bolt action rifle and a couple different repeaters, and my end consensus is I'm enjoying the Lancaster repeater, but I could go between that and the bolt action for my second long arm. For the repeater, it's great to focus on using that regular ammo in those early rounds and not going into your specialty ammo until you need to, maybe like waves 5, 6 and onwards. The combo of the semi-automatic shotgun and the Lancaster repeater for me really covers that short term and mid to long range fighting. Some folks prefer the Evans repeater. I'm not a big fan of it, although I know how many bullets it holds in the clip and that's pretty great. My personal preference for my handguns has been the double Mausers, however I do like the double navies as well. Each gun has different advantages and disadvantages, so use what's best for you and remember, ammo is important, although you can pick up additional ammo. It doesn't hurt to have things like dynamite and fire bottles as well, but those are often scattered around the areas to pick up too. Tip number two, ability cards. I like to call this my survival loadout. I have Paint It Black, which is great for emergencies and targeting lots of enemies. Winning Streak, of course, which lets you get additional damage for each shot. It's great for the bucket head. To fight another day, that'll help you when you're sprinting to ha get hurt less. As well as Strange Medicine, you're getting health every time you're inflicting damage. So I find this a good build for me for survival. There are additional builds that you can do as well. It's up to your imagination. Some of the posse related ones could be helpful as well. This loadout has worked really well for me. Man, I sound Canadian. That's all right. As there's a lot of sprinting and running around and really tough enemies, I find this a pretty great loadout for me. Maybe you will too. The next tip is come with a combination of level one, level two, and level three tonics. Get that vitamin T into you, but you can save your higher level tonics for the later waves. You should usually be pretty all right in those first five waves with just your basic level one tonic. But adjust to your playstyle. If you feel better having those level three tonics to start wave one, absolutely. Tip four, stick close together, especially in those last three waves. So much can go wrong from war wagons to cannonballs to one-shot snipers. Be close to your posse so you can revive one another because trying to get to them from a distance can be really challenging. Tip number five is to strategically place your NPCs in locations that will be beneficial to where you are playing at. For example, in Fort Mercer, I tend to take the NPCs that are down on the ground and move a couple of them to the top so they can take the dudes out that are coming up. Additionally, don't forget to heal them. Show them the love. In between waves, the ones that need to be healed turn yellow and you have a limited amount of time to go heal these dudes. They're your front line of defense, so treat them with the respect. Or let them die. I don't give a shit, it's your game. But it does make it a little easier going into waves 8 and 9 when you still have a couple of them alive, that's for sure. Tip number 6, listen for that heartbeat. When that heartbeat happens, nothing good's about to happen to you. Often it means a cannonball's coming or some other armored vehicle's coming to kill ya. If you hear a heartbeat, sprint, because something is coming to get ya. Some additional little tidbits as well is a lot of the armored vehicles won't appear on your mini-map until you become close. As well, some of the NPCs you might not see on your main mini-map, but if you actually go into your map, you will see where those NPCs are in some cases. I have had to do that. I don't know whether that's a glitch or the norm. I hope you found this video helpful. It's been one of the funnest modes that I've been playing with my friends, and I'm having a really good time. Like if you enjoyed this and subscribe for more unique Red Dead content. Take care.